It's pretty common for alleged criminals to lose their tempers during their sentencings, but it's even better when judges lose it. From Judge Millian wanting one of her defendants to be beaten to a pulp, to Judge Bachman chasing someone out of the courtroom. This list is a lot. Starting us off at number 10 is Judge Marilyn Millian. If you don't know who she is, she's a judge on the courtroom TV series The People's Court. So during one of the episodes, the defendant was continuously interrupting her and her patience was wearing thin. So she starts getting sassy with him. Would you be, rather I call you counselor, doctor, or anything else? How about Dr. McCaffrey, you? Your Honor? It creates a tone of respect. Where I'm from, you sort of gotta earn that. Things reach a boiling point when the defendant tells Million to watch herself, to which she loses it and shouts at him to get out of his courtroom. Watch yourself, okay. Your Honor. Get out of my courtroom! Get out! A pleasure. Out. A pleasure. Out. But she wasn't done with him. Thank you. Oh, no, oh no, he's not moving fast enough, Douglas. If Douglas touches out. me, you will not be happy, Your Honor. I, you know what? If Douglas beats you to a pulp, I'll be delighted. Get out. Damn. He better watch his back then. She was not playing around. Coming in at number nine is Judge Michael Bachman. But before I go any further, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and of course, subscribe. Come on guys, it really helps us out. So hit those buttons. So Bachman actually had to resign after this incident took place because it was just so unbecoming of a judge. So back in 2018, Bachman was in a trial when he heard a bunch of noise coming from outside. It was a defendant that was half an hour late to file court papers. He then runs out of the courtroom into the hallway to find her and then he felt the need to escort her to the courtroom himself. He literally puts his arm on her and directs her to the court and he doesn't let go until she's seated and he literally like sits her down himself. Inside his courtroom in Cincinnati, the magistrate sits the woman down in the jury box and then proceeds to sentence her to three days in jail for disrespectful and disruptive behavior. Sentences her to three days in jail for this. Crazy. Filling our number eight slot is Judge Kathleen McHugh. Probably never seen a court hearing quite like this. A South Florida judge lashing out at the former football star. So if you're into American football, then you may have already heard about ex-Cincinnati Bengal Chad Ochocinco's domestic battery case back in 2012. Chad was arrested after apparently headbutting his then wife during an argument. That ended in an agreement which gave Chad zero jail time and just a year of probation which he then violated in 2013. In this video, we see Chad at his plea hearing later that year. But he pulled a wrong move and during the hearing, he slapped his lawyer's bum, which made a lot of people in the courtroom laugh. And Judge Kathleen was not a fan of this. This isn't a joke. I didn't do it as a joke. Everybody in the courtroom was laughing. I'm not accepting these plea negotiations. Like he was so close, but alas, he had to slap his ass, didn't he? And he ruined it all for himself. At number seven, we have Judge Kiana Lillard. Ma'am, you are being taken into custody for criminal contempt. Your disruptive and disrespectful behavior disrupted today's proceedings. So back in 2017, Judge Lillard was presiding over a drunk driving case in which the defendant, Amanda Kossel, crashed into another car and killed the driver, Jerome Zerker, and critically injured his wife, Brittany. When the victim's family was reading their statements, the defendant's family started laughing and smiling while everyone else was crying. As a result, Judge Lillard kicked out one of the women, but then brings her back in and arrests her and sentences her to three months in jail. Ma'am, you are being taken into custody for criminal contempt, and you, ma'am, are going to the Wayne County Jail for 93 days for direct criminal contempt. Anybody else want to go? Try it. Don't mess around with the judge in her court. Making our way down the list number six, we have Judge William Buller. You didn't learn anything. You violated the law again by driving the same car that you already killed somebody with. Back in 2011, LaVon Turrentine was arrested for reckless driving, but was later released on bail under one condition by the judge. He doesn't drive. However, LaVon did not listen to the judge and continued to drive. One night, he ended up taking the life of a young boy. LaVon went back in front of the same judge who was then enraged by the fact that he did not listen to him. Obviously, he had his own guilty conscience since he was the one that released him on bail and then the guy went and killed someone. I told you you were not supposed to drive. 
So what it tells me is one bad decision after the another, you were not supposed to be behind that wheel. Judge William shouts so much, he almost loses his voice by the end of it. And then he gives him the max possible sentence. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Judge William Buller part two, because this judge is crazy. There's so many people I know that if you told them the facts, they want to break your neck. Honestly, I have no clue how he still has his job. The things he gets away with and saying, it's insane. So for this case, he was dealing with Michael Henry, a man who admitted to trying to take advantage of young individuals. And honestly, it's disgusting, so I get why Judge Michael Henry flipped out on him, but some of the things he said were a bit too much. If this happened to my daughter, or this happened to my granddaughter, you wouldn't be here. I would be charged with a penal law violation of a or worse. As a judge, you need to keep a level of professionalism. You can't get too attached to the cases. But this dude goes on threatening him, saying he would have beat him up and that he deserves it and more. Coming in at number four, we have Judge Vonda Evans. Be quiet and don't talk in my courtroom. I'm innocent. Be quiet. Take him back. Right. Take, Take him out. Right. Take, Take him out, out now. <laughs> Now, it's kind of normal for an angry defendant to be dropping F-bombs left, right, and center, but in this instance, it was the judge doing it. So Anthony Thornton was on trial for forcing himself, and then he gave his own testimony. As the judge was talking, Thornton tried talking over her, and she did not like this one bit. That's when she yelled, telling security to take him out of the court. Take him out! Right. Take him out now! Yeah, no! Yeah. Take him out! I'm him out. Anthony is brought back in later after he cools off, but the judge is still upset and berates him more. I can appreciate that. They gave you no right to disrespect I me. I have That's never been you. anything but respectful to you. And for you to say me in my courtroom was unacceptable. I mean, at least Anthony does apologize in the end, but the judge was not happy one bit. Coming in at number three, we have Judge Tracy Hunter. And plot twist, this time the judge was not the judge. No, this judge was actually the defendant in the room and she was gonna be sentenced to jail time. Back in 2014, Hunter was convicted of abusing her position as a judge to help her brother out during an employment dispute and was sent to jail for half a year. Hunter continuously appealed the decision and eventually had to face the issue in court. During her sentence, she refused to cooperate and an officer had to drag her out of the room by the armpits. She was literally getting dragged like a dead body. And then she claimed that she was hurt during the process. Now at number two is Judge McBain. All right, so this next case revolves around a man who was stalking some girl he went to high school with. The case had been taken to the court once already and Judge McBain told him to stay away from the woman. But he didn't, and he actually violated this just a couple hours after the court was adjourned. In the next hearing, the woman goes on about how he keeps harassing her. So the judge sentences him to jail for three days. But the stalker did not like this at all and begins to talk back and the two get into a fight. You had a bad attitude. You had a bad attitude last time you were in OR. You and her are buddy buddy. 45 days county jail. Oh. You want to oh. go for a year? Oh. Try it right now. The stalker is then told to stand up to be cuffed, and he's just not listening at all, and he's resisting being arrested. That's when McBain literally whips off his robe, and it turns into a fight. Right now. It's like Judge McBain thought that if he takes off his robe, he's like no longer a judge and he can just tackle and tase the dude, no problem. And finally, in our number one spot is Judge John Russo. Mr. Williams, I'm the judge in the matter. Shut your mouth and I'll tell you when you can talk. You got it? So back in 2018, 32-year-old Franklin Williams was accused of three armed robberies and Judge Russo was presiding over the case. During his hearing, Williams kept interrupting the judge and his own lawyer and got over a dozen warnings to shut up. After the first few interruptions, Russo says, I'm the judge in the matter. Shut your mouth and I'll tell you when you can talk. You got it? As his hearing proceeds, the judge gets more and more agitated. Do not let me that means what's going on. zip it right now. You trying to Does that make sense? 
Then he took it to the extreme by saying he was going to gag Williams. I interrupt, President. Mr. Williams, and listen, not listen to me. If we have to, I will gag you in one second. So listen, you will get a chance to talk. I'm going to gag you in one second. So just listen to me. Well, that's not very professional, is it? Well, guess what? It wasn't just a threat. Eventually, he orders for him to get his mouth taped. Attempt to bite oh, or injure any of my deputies. None of that, man. You're going to have a bad day. Oh, none of that. Oh, you clear. Put the tape on me, man. We But it doesn't go according to the judge's plan, cause guess what? He still finds a way to talk with the tape on. And I'll be monitoring everything I'll say. Go so ahead. Gonna... It's kinda actually funny. And that's all for today's video. Let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video Top 10 Real Crimes That Happened on Halloween. Seamus pronounced Seamus, not, not Seamus. Commented, the worst Halloween crime is giving apple slices or toothpaste instead of candy. Honestly, when people give out like caramel apples on a stick, I just throw them out because it's so unsanitary. Like you don't know what they did to that or if they even washed their hands making it or if their hair is in it or if they pushed items into it. Toothpaste, well, that's kind of funny. Uh, my mom used to do that. Lizeth Vazquez commented, do you guys remember from a couple years back that clown thing where they would knock on your door? It was all over the news a few years ago. And I heard it's back for 2020. Apparently this clown craze is coming back again. I totally remember it when there was just random clowns like lurking in the forest and creepy. No thank you. Gina Bizarro's ghosts commented, no way Landon, so glad you're in this one. I thought maybe you left. Seriously, you're my favorite. Landon is not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> so don't worry. And yeah, a lot of you guys liked the video that Landon, Che, and I did. That video has three hosts in it. It was really fun to make, so uh, go check that out. And that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see y'all when I see y'all.